Sparky on dub 2 zz asks if I can do a quick video on how to set up Blackbox with Naze32 with wiring and clean flight setup. And I can do that. I can do a quick one. Um, it's not going to have the, uh, the awesome graphics and production values you may have come to expect from this channel. But uh, sure, I can do it. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is follow the steps in this video on my channel to flash the Blackbox firmware to OpenLog. The firmware that the OpenLog device comes with is not as high performance as it could be. And when you're doing black box, especially at lower loop times, like, like a lot of people are running at 1000 loop time now, if you're running beta flight um, and, and so on. So at the lower loop times, uh, you're definitely going to want the black box firmware. The standard firmware that usually comes with it will do OK, but it, it may drop more packets at lower loop times. If you're running at loop times of above, say, 1500, it probably doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> so go ahead and follow these steps. I won't walk you through them. And then that'll get the right firmware on the box, on the open log. And by the way, I think there are some vendors that are shipping with the black box firmware already on it. Uh, but there are other vendors who are saying they're shipping with it. And then you get it and it doesn't have it. So Definitely follow the steps in this video, and it will tell you how to tell whether you actually have the OpenLog firmware on there or whether you have the black box firmware, which is what you want. Okay, so then you're going to wire it up, and the way you wire it up is first you have to decide which of the UARTs on the NAS you're going to use. Now, the NAS has two hardware UARTs UART 1 and UART 2. Black box must use a hardware UART. The soft serial connections are not fast enough to keep up with any of the reasonable loop times that you're going to be using. Uh, in, I guess in theory, if you were logging maybe one out of every four loops or five loops, something really low, then you would be able to use soft serial. Although I don't even know if Blackbox will let you go on soft serial. I don't know. I've never tried. But in theory, if you divided up into the logging enough, eventually you'd be able to get under the, um, I think soft serial maxes out at 19.2 kilobaud. So eventually you'd get down there, but the problem is in black box, if you're not logging every single loop, you're going to get distortions in your data. You're going to get aliasing and it's going to affect what you're seeing. You're going to see things in the data that aren't really there. So if you're logging every other loop, that's not so bad. But if you try to log every fifth or sixth or tenth loop to get the, the throughput down to something that you could run off a of soft serial, it would just be worthless. So don't do that. You must use a hardware UART, and you have two of them. So here's the thing. Uh, UART number one is connected to the TX and RX pins here on top of the board. UART number two is connected to pins RC3 and RC4, which is on the underside here. Okay, uh, if you use UART1, UART1 is also used for the USB. So if you use UART1, the way it works is when the copter is disarmed, then black box is obviously not doing anything. The copter is disarmed. There's nothing to log. And then the MSP protocol is run on UART1. MSP is what the GUI uses to talk to the copter. Okay, so when the copter is disarmed, MSP is running on UART1 and Blackbox isn't doing anything. When you arm, then Blackbox becomes active and starts talking to the open log device and uh, you lose your MSP, which means that if you have Blackbox on UART1, then when you arm the copter, the configurator stops talking to the copter, which is not a problem most of the time, but if you're trying to do something that requires you to have the configurator running and the copter armed, then you'll just need to go and disable black box if you if you've had black box on UART one. So it's not it's a little annoying. Um, it it also will stop if you got Bluetooth on the, those TX and RX pins on top of the board, then that'll stop working if you have black box on UART one and you arm. So the question is, do you need that configurator working when you have the copter arm? And if so. You may want to put black box on UART2. Well, let me actually let me back up. If UART2 is free and you're not using it for anything else, then put black box on UART2. 
<laughs> right? Don't 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 put two things. Leave your one alone so that you never have to. Oh, I, I armed the copter and the, my configurator stopped working. Okay, put it on UART2. But what if you're trying to do um, SBUS? You have an SBUS receiver that must be on a hardware UART, and you can't have it stop working every time you arm the copter. That's when you need it, you know, or when you disarm the copter. So that's no good. So um, if you're going to do SBUS, for example, you must have SBUS on UART2, at which point now you, where are you going to put black box? You must then put it on UART1. That's your only choice. This is one reason why the newer F3 boards like the Dodo, like the SP Racing F3 and the Moto Tornado and the Moto Moto board, all these new F3 boards that are coming out have three hardware UARTs and they're specifically designed to be able to do SBUS, Smart Port Telemetry, Black Box, and the MSP configurator protocol at the same time without any of this nonsense. Okay, so you follow all that? If UART2 is free and you're not using it for anything else, put black box on UART2. If you're using UART2 for something else, put black box on UART1. But as soon as you arm the copter, you will lose the ability to use UART1 and the USB port for the configurator. And you'll have to just manually turn off black box anytime you need anytime you need to have that working while the copter's armed. Okay, moving on. With OpenLog, you do not need the RX pin because OpenLog is one-way communication. The NASE transmits to the OpenLog device. The OpenLog has nothing to say. It's a listening-only device. So you only need one wire for data. Obviously, you also need power and ground. So if you're going to use UART1, you're going to take the TX pin, and if you're going to use UART2, it's going to be pin RC3 on the NASE board. That pin is going to go to the RX pin on the open log device. Transmit goes to receive. Okay? And then you're also going to need to hook VCC to your battery positive and ground to your battery negative. That's going to be 5 volts. It needs to be 5 volts. The simplest thing to do is to plug it into a spare motor header uh, on your on your nase. One of these. So if you've got a quadcopter, you one, two, three, four, you're using for the motors, you got two spare ones. Um, just plug it into one of them. It needs to be five volts regulated though. If you plug it into your battery voltage, you will fry it. That's that's the end of it. Okay, so now it's wired up. Then you're gonna go into clean flight. You're gonna go to your ports. And you're going to tell it where you want black box. Do you want black box here or here on UART1 or UART2? And also, you need to enable black box here in the configuration tab. I think you may need to do this first, actually. It's always confusing to me because it says configure port scenario first. I don't know. I, you may need to enable black box here before you see this option here. I can't quite remember. Um, anyway, I'm sure you'll figure it out. The other, the final thing you need to do is set your baud rate, and you want to be logging at 250 k baud. This is the main advantage that the black box firmware gives you that the open log firmware doesn't have. The open log firmware maxes out at 1152, and uh, you really need 250 k baud, especially if you're going to lower loop times. Um, I believe I've seen something like 170 to 200 k baud with one-to-one -one logging at a 1,000 loop time. So I think it's safe to say with 250 k baud, the, you, the 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 heart the serial port is not going to be the limit on your on your throughput your your flash card mic, for example. It could probably keep up, but if you're down at 115 to any loop time that's reasonably short is going to probably be too fast, and you're going to get drop frames. So either you are at one or you are at two. You tick the box, and you enable it here, and you're good to go. There's one other thing I want to show you, and that is these options: black box rate, num, black num, numerator, denominator, and black box device. Now the first thing I want you to see is. Notice that black box device black box device is zero here. It's turned off, but I have black box. This is related to the inbuilt flash card that comes on some 
NAS chips, some uh, some full NAS chips, and so on. They'll have a flash card with maybe two meg of flash data on it. You can you can log black box to that. This is the that's the black box device they're talking about. A lot of people get confused because they set black box device equals one, and then they wonder why black box is not working to their open log. This that's not what this is. So unless you have a, a flash chip built into your device, leave this alone. Leave it at zero. And then here we've got black box rate numerator and denominator. If you're logging at uh, a fast loop time and for whatever reason your maybe your your flash card can't keep up or you you're only running at 1152k baud and and so you can't you're getting drop packets and you're getting breaks in your lines when you look at the traces in uh, in the viewer then you can change these settings so for example if you were to set the denominator to 2 you would log every 1 over 2 1 half every other frame 1 over 4 every fourth frame and you can set it at any, I think the max denominator is 32. You could set log every one thirty second, every 30 second frame. You could log uh, every five 30 seconds frames, whatever fraction you want with a denominator of 32 and a numerator between one to 32. Um, it's your choice. However, I strongly advise you to do one-to-one -one logging. The reason is again, if you're not doing one-to-one -one logging, then you're gonna get aliasing in your data and you're going to see frequencies and, and, and data in those traces that is not really there. The, the main, there's two main reasons to do to not do one-to-one -one logging. One of them is if you, like I said, if you're not running at top speed and you have a very fast loop time and you it just can't keep up, at which point set it to one over two, the aliasing will not be too bad and you'll still be okay, probably. I mean, it's better than nothing. The other thing is if you have one of those inbuilt flash chips, it may be only 2 meg, and that doesn't actually add up to very much. It's only a few minutes of data at most, and then you're, whoop, you're out. So you may want to stretch that by going 1 over 2. But I strongly advise you not to go to higher uh, fractions like 1, three, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, or even higher than that, because it will screw up the data, and, and you really that's what you want to see that data, right? That's what it's for. All right, well, there you go. Hope that was helpful and happy, happy logging.